therefore told this parable to the chief priests and the Pharisees. The reign of God may be likened to a king who had gave a wedding banquet for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the wedding, but they refused to come. A second time he sent even he sent other servants saying, Tell those people who were invited, see my dinner is prepared. My bullocks and cork and cattle are killed, everything is ready, come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went their way, one to his farm and another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, insulted them, and killed them. At this the king grew furious and sent to his army to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, The banquet is ready, but those who were invited were unfit to come. That is why you must go out into the byroads and invite to the wedding anyone you come upon. The servants then went out into the byroads and rounded up everyone they met at as well as good. This filled the wedding hall with banquet tears. When the king came to meet the guests, however, he caught sight of a man not properly dressed in a wedding feast or a wedding feast. My friend, he said, how is that you came in here not properly dressed? And had nothing to say. The king then said to the attendants, Find him hand and foot and throw him out into the night to wail and cry his feet. The invited are many, the elect all are few. Glory. sent me a copy of what Rome had put out. So in the Vatican on their site, it, it all it mentions, I'll get us quickly to these things, but it also uh, mentioned uh, a 
you know, director of Alive in Christ. And I thought, the Vatican even gave a shout out for my Alive in Christ game. So I was, I was pretty excited about that. I thought that was a win. Yeah. Anyway, our gospel mentions a number of groups of people, a number of people. We hear about the king that wants to give a banquet. We hear about the son. We hear about the group of people that were invited. We hear about the people uh, that weren't originally invited, but later on invited by the servants that were all out on by roads and surrounding areas. We hear about even a, a man that came in that wasn't properly dressed. Even though he came in, he wasn't there with a the proper disposition. So he was out. And over the years, I've, I've preached on each of these groups of people, except for one group. One group I have not preached on. And that's the servants. St. Gregory the Great was saying, speaking of himself in a homily he gave, that as a priest, as a preacher, he is the servant. He is the servant of the master. He is the servant of the king. And when he comes and when he speaks, he does not speak with his own authority. He does not speak with his own power. He has no glory of himself. He has no rights. All he is called to do is speak the words of the king and convey the message. Those that hear the message are too interested in the servant, are too interested in anything about him other than the message they came to deliver from the king. And he would go on to say, as a preacher, I am the servant of the master. And even though I am sinful, I am broken, and I have my faults and propensities, I'm adding that word. I am still delivering the word of the master for your benefit. That's the role of a priest. One of his roles is to take be the voice that you hear from the master, from the king. And so though I may exhort you and tell you to you know, despise the world, or don't get stuck in the it's done for a purpose because the king has asked me to preach that word. It's an invitation to the wedding peace. Everything that the servant did was to bring about an invitation to the peace. So don't look at my sinfulness, my propensities, my weaknesses, my foibles, my lack of knowing everything. I mean that I don't have the words and the power to speak that Christ came to speak. But everything I say, the wonderful stuff, the terrible stuff, the stuff that encourages, the stuff that corrects, is meant to be an invitation. An invitation to the peace. And we can see how this invitation works because Christ himself extends the invitation. He's always inviting us back to the peace. Repent, return, come back to me. He uses himself, he uses angels, he uses the prophets, the judges before them. He's used the Baptists, he's used the apostles, and the countless men and women throughout the ages that have come out to your friends, extending the invitation to come to the feast. You who are broken, you who are sidelined, you who think you have no worth, no value, the world rejects. Come. Come to the feast. And it's quite interesting because all of you are baptized priest, prophet, and king. Yes, you're part of the group. The, the servant has gone out and rounded up. And you've come into the wedding feast. But you're also the ones who are the servants. You too are called to go out and extend the invitation to invite you. With your words of invitation, come and see. Come and see our church. Come and see our faith. Come and try to experience it, try to live it. 
play of words. The buyer action is true. Probably more important because they're telling, more telling than the words you speak because you can say fancy things. But when you're not realizing or thinking about what you're doing, then the real you comes out. And that's what people notice and they, they remember. So be the priest that you're called to be by virtue of your baptism. Be the servants, be the creatures that go out into the world and invite to the feast. The time of invitation started with Christ. And it continues and remains open until the close of time. Until that very last breath that we draw. As we're drawing that very last breath just before the very last draw that the, the soul is still there, there's still an opportunity to return to the wedding feast, to come to the banquet and receive his mercy, receive his kindness, his forgiveness, and his love. Because as I shared with the people last night at the announcements, God's heart is one of open love. He has not reserved his love for those who are good versus those who are bad. He has not reserved his love for the perfect in exclusion of the imperfect and the sinner. His love is full for each and every one of us, both in this little temple and the world at large. His love was so great that he was even willing to die on the cross in the flesh for love of the people that he knows would betray him, both during his time and throughout the ages. Many of us would be willing to die for our loved ones, to trade places for the ones we care about. But how much different would it be to lay down your life for someone who did you harm? Who ridicules you, continue. Would you lay down your life for him? It would be a little harder. But Christ didn't think anything of it. He laid his life down for all. In hopes that we would accept his invitation to the peace. So let us not wait to accept the invitation. So let us not restrain ourselves from going out and extending the invitation. So that as many as possible who have an open heart and receive the gift of that love he has. Because that's the only thing that prevents us from experiencing more love. Is our own hardness of heart. Our own propensities that block the light, if you will. Remember about transfiguration? It's, we sing in our trope, are they, they see, saw as much of the glory as they could behold, as they could behold. God had more, but just enough. For them. Now, if we just open our hearts to experience that, I can just open it up a little bit, try to do what we do. That's the whole reason we come here. Is to open our hearts to receive that love that He's just trying to pour into us. We'll experience a change in life. So, as a preacher, I extend to you the invitation. The king has given me to extend. Everything is made ready. The fatted calf is prepared. The banquet is ready. And we have our ready garments, our baptismal robes upon us. So let us with open hearts receive that invitation and enter in. And let us invite others to experience the great love and joy that awaits us, that would await them they just had someone willing to take a chance and share the love of God. This is what we're called to do this day and every day of our life. And we want to do it. Because we don't want to find ourselves outside the door of the heavenly kingdom knocking. And no one answers because we did not accept the invitation soon enough. We want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Come into your master's joy. The invitation is yours. Accept it with an open heart. And invite others to enter in as well.
and the ever beautiful founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always now and ever and forever.
is that you're in here, where you are going up in a woman conceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing and ever the same, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of your existence into being and again raised your Son with his home, and left nothing in done unto you, brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. All that we know and that we do not know, for the manifest of the adventures bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which we are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though we stand before you, thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, seraphim and seraphim, six million midnights are on on their wings, singing, shouting, crying out, and saying, The Triumphal Year. Sacrifice for those departed in the faith, 
the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, mourners, confessors, ascetics, and for every just fear about the perfection of faith, are set free to our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and most great. The fear of the first and the first and the first and the first. It is truly proper to glorify you, O Theotokos, the ever-blessed and
through the grace of the mercy and the kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, and gather with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever.
you are of sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Everything is to the T, uh, except I got a black mark, as I did last year, where I'm not having the internal controls because I'm being published everything. And uh, I'm writing the checks, I'm balancing the checkbooks, uh, 
And so I have to do these extra steps of putting this report together, and then I send them before our meetings to our council, and they review it. It shows all the checks that have been written, all the money that came in, and, and where it all, and then the balance sheet, that balance sheet is an amazing tool. And then the P&L sheet of where all the money was allocated. So we get good there. And then on um, this coming week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I won't have to with the logistical schedule, but they are going to install the new microphones, new camera, uh, all the new mixing boards, everything that comes to updating our system so we can uh, serve uh, our online community and do as an online community. We can continue to serve them. Have a wonderful week. You feel the light and love. And remember that love that God, He loves you unconditionally. I just can't stress that enough. I just can't stress that enough. Unconditionally. There's nothing you can do to earn more of His love. And no matter how shameful or bad you are, you see, he still loves you unconditionally. But we suffer because we can't receive that love. So that's where confession is, and that's where repentance is, and that's where the sacraments is. All they help us to open that heart of the love, receive that love. And when we know we're living that way, because then our lives are properly ordered. We don't get to do everything we want to do, but we do the things we know we have to do. Show kindness and mercy to all alike. It doesn't yeah. matter whether they hit us with a stick yeah. or they call us in it. It doesn't matter. We still love them. We ask for the repentance. We pray for the repentance and, and that they come to the wedding feast. But I just want you to remember as we go to the course of the week, we go to the course of this new year because we start the new liturgical year. That this is the thing for you this year would be to open your heart. To experience his love so we have to do all the things as I said we require to do to open that heart but it will pay to be and we've got a beautiful fasting season coming up in November as we prepare for the feast of the what a wonderful opportunity there and of course the great winter fast of, uh, or the, the fast for Pascha that's, that's what we do our work that's who we are so all of our fasting, all our prayers, everything we do, that's the that's fear. That's, the, that's what we do. That's what we do. But we do it out of love. Not out of, I hope you don't come because it's an obligation. God forbid that you, your love has to be an obligation. Our love means to give freedom, to want to be with your beloved, right? And so that's what we do. That's what I love when I just... I just can't stress it enough. Have a wonderful week. And uh, show that. Glory to Christ, our own glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. Amen. Glory and mercy, glory and mercy, Lord, and mercy.
Board of Metropolitan way into our ground looking for the ship coming from our work many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many. Grant them many blessed years. To my brother, please, the bishop elect Robert Brown Lord many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many years. God grant them many blessed years. All our priests, the diaconal monastic orders, to our altar service, to our cantors, to all you gathered at these services, Brown Lord many years. God grant them
All creation glorifies you forever. Amen. God, my God, thou consuming and visible fire, you make your angels flaming fire. In your inexpressible love, you have condescended to give me your divine flesh. You have allowed me to partake of your divinity by possessing your most pure body and precious blood. May they penetrate my entire body and spirit and all my bones. May they burn away my sins, enlighten my soul, and brighten my understanding. May they sanctify me, make a dwelling place in me, so that I can make me new forever. With your blessed Father and your Holy Spirit, through the prayers of your most pure mother, and of all your saints. Amen. Christ our God, mystically you have made me worthy to be a partaker of your most pure body and precious blood. I praise, bless, and worship you. I glorify you and extol your salvation, O Lord, now and ever and forever. Amen. Most holy lady, the light of my darkened soul, my hope, my protection, my refuge, my comfort, and my joy. I thank you for enabling me, unworthy as I am to be a partaker of the most pure body and precious blood of your Son. You gave birth to the true life, enlightened the eyes of my heart. You bore the source of immortality, give life to me for dead in sin. O oh, compassionate and loving Mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me. Grant me compunction and contrition of heart, humility of mind, and the recollection of my scattered thoughts. Make me worthy, even until my last breath, to receive the most pure and sanctifying mysteries without condemnation for the healing of my soul and body. Give me tears of repentance and confession that I may praise and glorify you all the days of my life. For you are blessed and glorified forever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, may your holy body bring me everlasting life. May your precious blood remit my sins. May this Eucharist give me joy, health, and happiness. At your dread second coming, grant that I, a sinner, stand at the right side of your glory, through the prayers of your most pure mother and of all the saints. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.